My name is Wilfred Ndifon. I'm the director of research for the Ames Global Network. Um, I'm a theoretical biologist and uh, I was inspired to go into this field uh, because uh, I want to solve problems, especially health-related problems that affect uh, our society. And uh, initially I uh, thought medicine, doing medicine would be the best approach uh, to address those problems, but I realized that through theoretical biology I can improve medicine, I can improve uh, so I can uh, have uh, uh, contribute to the development of drugs, or vaccines, uh, improved medical practices, but more importantly, understanding disease, how humans respond to diseases and so on, uh, and other related questions. So I have, um, well, my interests are very broad within theoretical biology. I do many things, and some of the things I do even touch on experimental work. So I have, my general approach is to make observations, see things that uh, intriguing things that can't be explained or aren't explained by uh, the current uh, scientific uh, uh, understanding and uh, to develop theories to explain those things and then to test those theories I normally have to put them in a form that is testable. For me the preferred form is to develop mathematical models. Sometimes it may require experimentation so you can develop a model that's experimental but mostly I focus on mathematical models and I use these models to test the deductive validity of my theories. If I say, this is the cause of this particular observation, is it really the case that that's the cause? So if I start with the premises that I've, I've given, I've put forward, would I arrive at the observation that I I'm trying to explain? So that's the approach I, I, I use, uh, uh, my approach to science. And of course, is the, is the fundamental, is the basic approach to science that has been applied uh, for millennia, for as long as uh, humans have lived. Now, um, I apply this to many different kinds of questions. Uh, there are questions about uh, how uh, our bodies respond to disease. So our immune system is really the system that's responsible for protect us, protecting us against diseases. So, but how does it really function? It's a very complex system. We don't know enough about it. I'm also thinking about um, uh, looking at uh, questions of improving the design of vaccines and also improving how we keep track of the effects that uh, diseases and other uh, things that we're exposed to, how they affect us. So can I develop a tool that I can use to look into your blood, in a, in a blood sample, for example, and tell some of the things that you've undergone in terms of exposures to disease? And can I project into the future and say, maybe you are more, you'll be susceptible to X or Y disease in, the, in five or 10 years time. So those are the kinds of big challenges I'm addressing. But something even more fundamental is the question of, so we can use our understanding of physics to put, to send a, a satellite, to place a satellite in some particular uh, uh, region of space. But if we look within our own bodies, we understand much less. And the reason physics has, has progressed the way it has, a, a big reason is because um, ideas, theories can be put into a form that is easily testable, that can be used to make deductions, which can in, uh, also be tested. And so how can we develop a similar system for biology in general? That's a big challenge. There's no solution to it. Uh, but I hope that maybe by the time I'm done doing research, I would have made a significant advance in that area. So basically, developing uh, a quantitative theory for biology that has the kind of power that we find in quantum mechanics, for example. So <clears throat> we are AIMS, um, at AIMS who've promised uh, that we're going to help to transform Africa through mathematical sciences. And one of the things we're going to work, we're working on uh, making sure we, we, we do is to provide evidence of the transformations. Either we don't want to just keep talking about potential of things we can do, but provide big example, concrete examples of the things that we've done that have transformed society, that have changed society. So the impact is going to be a, a, a big deal. How we get that impact is what we, we're currently thinking about. And one uh, thing we're going to do is to promote the creation of communities of practice. At AIMS, if we want to understand climate change and develop uh, mitigation or adaptation strategies, we can't do everything on our own. 
we have our, spe our uh, speciality, we have things, areas that we are excellent in. We need to find partners who would work with us in a community so that what we do fits into what they're doing so, and then collectively we actually solve uh, real world problems. And we've started some of that, for example, we're going to be collaborating with the Rwandan Biomedical Center to create a practical solution to the problem of uh, uh, disease surveillance. So right now, our understanding of which kinds of diseases might arise, when they will arise, is very limited in Africa. Can we develop early warning systems for this? We're going to work on that. Um, another e problem we're going to work on is to develop a way uh, to improve the medical literature. So uh, if you're taking a drug now, it's very likely that uh, the drug was tested in the West. And so the symptoms, the side effects of drugs depend a lot on your genetics. It depends on the environment in which you live because you've been, in, you've been exposed to different uh, uh, in, environmental insults that alter your, your, whether it's your immune system or different systems in your body in such a way that it affects how you respond to drugs. So, which means that we have to be, um, to be careful about um, uh, using drugs that may have effects on African populations that have not been seen because they were tested in European populations, for example. We're going to develop a way to actually improve our understanding of, this, of the side effects of drugs. Um, so those are a couple of things we're going to do in Rwanda. But we're also going to uh, launch a big program in climate change science. We know uh, the climate is changing. We're already seeing the effects. You have droughts, uh, food shortages, water shortages in different parts of Africa. How do we respond to this? We can't respond without understanding what's happening. And the climate is a complex system to make predictions about uh, how, how the climate will change in, in the near future or uh, in, on a longer time horizon, we need mathematical models. That's what allows us to connect our current understanding with what might happen. One of the problems we, we have at African uh, institutions is that people who do research have to do many other things. And so they don't have enough time to do research, but also they don't have enough resources. The CHESS program is trying to change that, to provide them with the resources and the time to focus on research. And these people are contributing to capacity building and research, which is great, which we really need. So um, in South Africa, the South African Research CHESS program has had a big impact on the product, on research production and also capacity building at AIMS. We already have, we're also seeing the impact of that. And uh, we hope that the program will increase. Uh, we'll have many more chairs in the near future. Right now we have nine active chairs. Uh, two have uh, come to the, the end of their, term, their tenure, but we have nine active chairs and a tenth uh, um, additional chairs that we, we're looking forward to putting in place in the near future. Yeah, that's a very difficult uh, question to answer. Uh, <clears throat> I think we need, to, we need to have people who are inquisitive, who ask questions about things they see around them, uh, who don't take things for granted, who don't just don't say, well, this thing has been, I've been told this is true, so it must be true, who question uh, the things, uh, information they receive. I think this is very important if you have critical thinkers who are inquisitive, it doesn't matter any, what, what field they go into, they're going to have a big impact on society. We, have this kind, we need these kinds of people who are thinking, questioning, and open to new ideas. And I think through that, we're going to create um, the kind of society that we, we need. Um, so <clears throat> I like to think of uh, uh, problems, the solutions to, uh, pr the problems that societies face, um, they are in, in essence, they are ideas. And these ideas exist in some space. So what mathematicians would call a space, which has a certain, um, a di uh, certain dimensions. And um, so the question, the issue about solving problems really is about finding the right combinations of ideas within this space. And in order to do this, we need a number of things. One, we need people to be 
open to acquiring as uh, many uh, relevant, potentially useful ideas as possible. We need people to, we need a, pros, a process of negative selection, what biologists call negative selection. So if we are discussing about something and you propose a solution and I think it's wrong and I have a logical reason, uh, explanation for why it's wrong, I shouldn't sit quietly while a wrong uh, solution goes, uh, becomes implemented because that results in wastage. So we need people to be open to ideas, but also to ensure that they can, um, um, they can select against ideas that they believe are incorrect or um, that are not uh, relevant to solving uh, specific problems. If we have many people practicing this, idea generation, idea selection, I think eventually we're going to move like biological uh, systems move towards regions that are favorable, that um, allow them to be adapted to the environment. Society as a whole will move towards regions that are more favorable to the living conditions of its uh, members. We need a change that starts uh, in the household. We need a change in the culture. Um, we need to develop a culture of ideas, basically. And, um, and so we need parents to encourage their kids to question even them. And that's a little change, different change like that can make a big difference because it helps to expand the child's intellectual horizon. The child is thinking, well, I mustn't be limited by things that adults tell me um, uh, uh, I should not do, okay, I shouldn't um, inquir make inquiries about because those things adults have agreed they, they are good for society. If we allow them the freedom, the space to question us, I think we'll be contributing towards building the kind of, uh, of uh, society we want. We need people to be inquisitive, to always question. And something that we don't always think about is that there is um, a big loss that we, we suffer as Africans uh, from a malnourishment of kids. Because there is, um, within all, each, each person, there is a certain a capacity to develop a certain co uh, poten intellectual potential. And in order to exploit that, you need your, to allow your brain to develop well. So nerve cells need to be formed, connections need to be formed, all the required connections that require you to understand the world, to, to make sense of uh, your surroundings, and, and invent new things. And, uh, malnutrition, especially of little children, it robs Africa of this human intellectual capital. And that's something we really need to think about. 